This video is a review of polar and spherical coordinates in two and three dimensions. So building from our previous video reviewing trig functions in two dimensions, we can represent a coordinate as either a Cartesian point, that is a value with an X coordinate and a Y coordinate, kind of a length and a height, or we could represent it in polar coordinates, having a distance from the origin R and an angle from the plus x axis theta. So the interconversions of those two representations would be that r is, by the Pythagorean theorem, the hypotenuse of this right triangle of x and y, square root of x squared plus y squared. And if you look at the values here, we have the opposite side is y, the adjacent side is x, that is the, the quotient of that is the tangent of this angle. So theta is the arc tangent of y over x, uh, making sure you take into account which quadrant here uh, you get because uh, that might be a positive or a negative number depending on uh, the relative values there. All right, so x is equal to r times the cosine of theta and y is equal to r sine of theta. You can convince yourself of that by kind of reversing those derivations. So in Cartesian coordinates, we have x and y are unbounded. They can take on any real value, anywhere between negative infinity and positive infinity for both x and y. But for r, we're taking uh, the square root of the square of two numbers there. The square of a, num of a real number has to be positive. The sum of two positive numbers is going to be positive. Square root of that is positive. So r can't be negative. r represents a distance from the origin of this plane. So that's always going to be a non-negative number. So the lowest r can be a 0, but then it can go all the way up to infinity as your uh, distances increase from there. And then theta, in principle, we can just keep going forever. You can you can put in values of theta and they'll give you valid answers for x and y, but they start to become redundant after 360 degrees. They aren't giving us any new information after that. So the, really, the only unique uh, domain of theta is to go from 0 to 2 pi or from 0 to 360 degrees because theta is what you would call periodic every 2 pi. It repeats itself every 360 degrees. All right, so that's polar coordinates in two dimensions. So the analog in that in th of that in three dimensions is what you would call spherical polar coordinates, or sometimes called spherical coordinates. So in Cartesian, in three dimensions, we would have an x, y, and z coordinates. So just like in two dimensions, those are unbounded. They can go from negative infinity to plus infinity in x, y, and z z represented by this kind of dot as a vector coming out of the plane pointing towards us right now. Or we could represent these as spherical polar coordinates where we have r, theta, and phi. So r is very similar to the analog in two dimensions that through the Pythagorean theorem ends up being the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared now. You can work yourself through that by doing it first in the xy plane and then the hypotenuse in that plane up to the value in z. Then phi, not theta, which is sort of confusing, but phi is sort of the analog to theta in polar coordinates. Phi represents the angle in the xy plane from the plus x axis, just as theta did in polar coordinates. So that's the arc tangent of y over x again, taking care of noting what quadrant you're in. So those two coordinates are very similar to what we've seen before. But the last coordinate we would call theta. So theta is actually the angle from the plus z axis of our point, x, y, z. So the closest it can be is right on the plus z axis, where it would start at 0 degrees. And it can go all the way down to the negative z-axis or 180 degrees from the plus z-axis. So theta goes from 0 to pi radians, 0 to 180 degrees, and you would measure that as the arc cosine of z over r. So once again, r is unbounded, 
it goes from zero or sorry r is bounded on one side it goes from zero to infinity distance from the origin once again uh, phi can be anywhere in this xy plane in terms of angles it's going to repeat itself and be periodic every two pi 360 degrees and phi is going to be from zero to 180 degrees and when you come out the other side you're still at 180 degrees okay uh, converting back to Cartesian coordinates we have x equals r times sine theta times cosine phi y equals r times sine theta times sine phi and z is just equal to r cosine theta so any of these coordinate systems can equally well be represented uh, can be used to represent any coordinates in two or three dimensions but sometimes the problem is just easier to express in one or the other so sometimes you'll need to interconvert based on those sometimes for integrals you'll need to know what the ranges of these things are those kinds of things to keep in mind whenever you're using one of these types of coordinate systems for functions in multiple dimensions